obviously being on Riverdale and doing this work, I, what are your plans for the future? Is it kind of acting and continuing to do this, fighting of sex trafficking? Would you like to yeah. lean more towards one or the other? Thanks for asking. Um, it's kind of a blend of both. I'm, you're actually the first person I'm going to announce it to, but I had a very long talk with Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, our creator and showrunner of Riverdale. And I'm really, really proud to announce that um, Hermione will not only be back for season five, but she will be back stronger and better than ever. Okay, we love it. So I'm really excited in telling her story and that side of her. Um, But it also allows me to pursue other ventures. So I, I literally have two documentaries that I'm producing on human trafficking as well as two other scripted shows and it leaves me open to do other things. So it's kind of perfect. Yeah. And it's a blending of both those things. I, I think being an actor, Amazing. going undercover for me, it's like combining two incredible passions. Oh yeah, the synergy is there a hundred percent. You know, I got to dig a little bit more and got to activate my access Hollywood. You said we're going to dig more into your Riverdale, your Riverdale character, the strength of your yes. character. What does that mean exactly? Like how, well, how let, me, let me elaborate on that because this, this is what we talked about. And I, you know, we talked about the fact that Hermione was in it for lack of a better word, a very abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. Not that she was innocent herself, yeah. but this man obviously treated her horribly. And now we're going to get a chance to see her fight back, mm. see her say no. Yeah and yeah. stick up for not only herself, but in my mind, every woman or girl out there that gets mm-hmm. stuck in that kind of a situation. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of what is coming. It's gonna be wow. great. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's been said that, you know, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are all in alignment. And oh. as I talk to you, you just feel that alignment. And I, I imagine it has to feel pretty good for the day job, for the acting on set, for the, t- the ex- exploration of these characters and what you're doing by night to be in alignment, to show the strength of women and our power. Would you agree? How do you feel about that? Oh, a hundred, a hundred. It's so funny because it's been such a separated world. I, I don't even think my Riverdale co-stars know about this. Really? I have no idea. better tune in Access Hollywood. <laughs> but not, you know, to the degree that that came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that happiness really is. It's going towards goals and achieving them. And the closer you get to those things, the happier that you get. And for me, I have two sort of separate things that not only am I able to keep going on, but bring them together. Yeah. Um, I have more stuff coming, which I can't wait to announce. Um, but I'm really, I'm pretty, pretty happy. You're on the wildly popular hit show, Riverdale, but some people might not know about your very powerful personal story and how you're heavily involved in fighting sex trafficking. Your story is absolutely amazing. So if you could just kind of open it up and explain to our viewers exactly what it is you do and how you got involved with that. Sure. Um, So I started learning about human trafficking, uh, Mm -hmm. particularly child sex trafficking, and wanted to throw up. And I found it disgusting and horrific. And I, you know, through learning about it and traveling back and forth to D.C. and meeting with the State Department and the executive branch of the White House under Obama and all different organizations, I wanted to see, you know, what I could do. I wanted to be able to do something. And so through forming my own foundation, uh, Foundation for Slavery Free World, I met um, some individuals that are absolutely incredible, former CIA, former Homeland Security, and there who sort of trained me up to be able to go undercover and use my acting skills to help catch pedophiles. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you're doing. I mean, that juxtaposition of what you're doing in the day and then using those skills for something that is so courageous. I mean, you're really putting yourself out there on the front lines to yeah. catch these terrible people. And it, it's so brave. What, whose idea was it initially? I, I understand that you're working with this group and you're learning more about this world. Yeah. When it came to actual stings, was it you saying, you know what, put me out there? Or was it a recommendation from someone within the organizations you were working with? 
It was, thank you for asking that. Yeah, I was going along to watch. I, I always believe that the more knowledge you have of something, the more that you can make a difference at it. So I was like absorbing and learning everything I could. So I was on one of the ops um, on our way back from Haiti because we were looking into a house that was being used for organ, organ trafficking and children. And on the way back, we stopped um, in another state. And like I said, the person that I was with is um, Tim Ballard, who's part of Operation Underground Railroad. He's the CEO mm -hmm. and founder of it. And he basically was like, hey, you want to go undercover? <laughs> wow. And that's how I, I was like, yes. The reaction was... Yes. What do you need yes. me to do? Yes. Wow. Wow. Um, but I don't want, I don't want to give the impression that it was that easy. You know, he also sent yeah, Navy SEALs to my home personally to train me up in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, I've also gone through hostage training. I went through a lot to be able to do it. So it wasn't just as simple as that, but at the same time, it really was just, do you want to do this? And it was like, yes. And just being courageous enough to commit to it. I mean, that was my next question is the research, the planning that goes into this. This is not a thing you show up for and just improv your way through. No, 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 no. no. So ex explain to me, walk me through that process. What sort of research and planning went into it? There are very particular ways that you have to interact with the Johns who you're essentially helping to sting. Yeah, exactly. Um, so basically when, when whoever's doing the op, puts an ad into the paper. So whatever agency is doing that, they'll put an ad into the paper and it's coded. And believe me, it's like Craigslist. Yeah. And it's a coded ad that's basically like to pedophiles, they know exactly what it means. And it's, hi, we're in town for three days and we have a child who's nine years old or 12 years old. And why don't you come and have sex with them? Ugh. And you'd be shocked at how fast appointments are made. You want to, you're just horrified. And that's sort of where I come in. So what will happen is these guys are making appointments to show up and the ones that do this for a very long time or have done this for a very long time mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's an actual kid there. So mm -hmm. one of the roles I will play is I will jump on the phone and use my acting skills and talk like a little kid, like a nine year old or 12 year old who's being trafficked by uh, her parents or her aunt or whoever. Mm -hmm. And, get these guys to believe that there's a kid there so that they will then come out of hiding and we can take them down and wow. put them behind bars. Um, the other know. side of it is if we can't get a guy to show up or a guy to say that on the phone, they have to show up. And so when they show mm. up, I'm already decked out as like a mess addicted woman mm. who's, you know, in from Mexico and is selling her kid for drugs. And then I have to act the part, that part in person in the hotel yeah. room with hidden cameras and stuff so that we can get enough evidence to take them away.